how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turned his face away, as moons which mourn the chosen one, bring many sons to glory. Do 
Good morning. Good morning. And my name is Tom Hooker, and on behalf of um, Reverend Connie Hooker, uh, our, our worship assistant, and um, our special guests, our musicians, as well as our tech crew of uh, Lori Costello and uh, Audrey MacArthur and Cheryl Martucci, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us, whether you are here in person or worshiping with us online. We're just so glad that you are here. And a special welcome to our guest musicians this morning, Carter Houston and Emma Evans. Um, they are filling in for uh, our music director, Rhonda. We are so glad you're here, and we are looking forward to sharing worship with you this morning. Today, we're going to be talking about renewal. As we continue our series of Seasons of Change, how God renews us and how we share that with others. Now, if you are worshiping with us online, I want to make a special invitation to you this morning. Um, if you are worship, worshiping with us online, I invite you to connect with us. Put something in the comments section. Tell us where you are from. We'd love to know where all of our online worshipers are worshiping from. We know at least that, they're, um, that someone is worshiping from Florida. And we'd like to know whether there are other, others who may be from around the country or even uh, somewhere around the world worshiping with us. So uh, if you could place in the comments section where you're worshiping from, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd also love to get your email address, so if you can send us an email with your email address so that we can uh, communicate with you and send you our weekly um, electronic newsletter called The Flash so that you may know what is happening in the life of this congregation. And again, thanks so much for worshiping with us. A new day has dawned. This is God's gift to us. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. The old has passed away and the new has come. And so we come together in this worship space and online to celebrate God's love and what God is doing in our lives and in the church. And as we worship together, may we offer our thanks and praise to God. Let us worship. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay, light of the world in darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his. And he is mine, brought by the precious blood of Christ. 
No guilt in life, no fear in death This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand Good morning. Let us pray. God of forgiveness and grace, thank you for welcoming us so warmly and lovingly. Open our hearts that we may fully receive your grace and love. Bless us and renew us that we may live as the new creations you envision us to be. Inspire us to be Christ's representatives here on this earth. Amen. <clears throat> It's now time for our children's message. And so I invite those of you who are online to uh, gather around your computers or your TV screens. And we do have a couple of children here. And if you are comfortable with it, and if your parents are comfortable with it, I invite you to come right up here and participate in this with me in whatever way you can, okay? Now for this children's sermon, I have to move my set a little bit here. So if you'll give me a, a moment here to move things around. Okay, for this children's message, we are going to lay down on the job, literally. We're going to lay down on the job. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay down on the floor and we're gonna stare straight up at the ceiling. Okay, you think you can do that? You think you can do that at home? All right, let's do it. Let's lay down on the, now, I might need some help getting up. <laughs> All right, let's lay down. Okay, let's look up at the ceiling and tell me what you see. What do you see when you look straight up? Well, you see a ceiling, right? I see a white ceiling. I see some lights. And I see a case for the, the screen with the screen hanging out of the end of it just a little bit. And I can see the bottom of the TV over here. And that's about it. Can you see anything else? Maybe if you're at home, you might see something different. You might see a fan up on the ceiling, depending on where you're, you're looking. But here's the point. This is one point of view. This is all you can see. So if someone were to ask you to describe the church this way, all you would be able to describe is, well, it looks like it might be a building. It looks like it has a ceiling and then some lights and a screen and maybe a TV and maybe a fan. Because when you have this point of view, you can't see the communion table or the altar you can't see the candles, you can't see the flowers, and worst of all, you can't see the people. So you really can't see what the church is like. Okay, we can get up now. It might take me a little while. Ah. Thank goodness for the uh, communion rail. Okay, so we have a point of view. Now, the Apostle Paul tells us in the, in the Bible verses that Pastor Connie is going to read for us in a few moments that we need to have a point of view of Christ. Now, that means that we need to see everybody the way that Jesus sees us. 
and the way that Jesus sees other people. And Jesus sees everyone in the same way. No matter who they are, no matter what clothes they're wearing, what the color of their eyes or the color of their hair or even the color of their skin. Jesus sees everyone the same. And Jesus loves everyone the very same. And that's how we need to be looking at people. So we need to have a point of view of Jesus, not a human point of view, because our human point of view is very limited. It's like looking up at the ceiling. We only see it from one way. But if we have a Jesus point of view, then we can see people. We can see them with love and with care. Can you do that? Can you look at someone? Turn, turn to your mom or dad or maybe a brother or sister, whoever is near you, and look at them and see Jesus in them. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for Jesus, and thank you for giving us such a, a great point of view of the world and of other people, seeing everyone the way you see them, with love and care and compassion. And so we know that there are times when our point of view is very limited. And we pray, oh God, that you might open our eyes, expand our vision, so that we might see the way Jesus sees. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you for joining me and participating. And thank you at home for joining me and participating. One with God, the Lord most high, bidding glory in creation, and now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. It didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great and love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. My King, what a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. Veil tore before you, you silence the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. My King, what a powerful
awful name it is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Our scripture lesson this morning is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Listen for the word of the Lord for you today. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So when seasons change, they change gradually. However, sometimes we're surprised. Sometimes the unexpected occurs. <clears throat> so when we move from, when, we, when March rolls into April, we see signs of spring, while winter still lets us know that its presence with an occasional April snowfall. <clears throat> but we have hope. We have hope in this renewal because when, when it comes to springtime, it's a sign of renewal. And we see the buds on the trees and the grass is turning greener. And we do have that hope. And then, as April turns into May, the weather gets warmer, the days get longer, and indeed, we look towards the summer season, and we have dreams of, of being able to wear shorts and t-shirts and polo shirts, and to be able to ditch those heavy winter coats and sweaters and, and boots. And by June 21st, summer should be full-blown. And the key word is should be. Because sometimes the environment belies the season. And sometimes we experience the unexpected. This past Tuesday, as I was leaving a meeting, early in the morning, someone said to me, Enjoy the nice fall day. It was indeed a bit chilly on Tuesday, the day after the 21st, when summer should have been full-blown. And I remember last year, in May, having to scrape an icy, snowy slush off of my car. Yes, we do have some cold days still in the spring and summer just as we can have some warm days in the fall and, and winter. But weather seasons aren't the only seasons that change. 
There are all kinds of seasons, all kinds of times in our lives. And we go through different experiences, and those seasons change. You know, we might be in a season where we feel particularly close to God. We sense that we are in tune with God. Or that, as they say, we're on fire for the Lord. And it seems that our ministries um, at that particular point are have an abundance of fruitfulness. But then there are also times when we feel disconnected from God. Maybe we feel far away because we are the ones that have moved, not God. But maybe it's a time when our spiritual practices have drifted away or they found some dark corner and we can't seem to retrieve them. We find it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to pray. We don't want to worship. And our focus just seems to be on all the cultural things of the world. And we don't feel like we're in tune with God. And no matter what we do in ministry, it doesn't seem to be working. But the good news is that it is a season. When there is winter, there will be spring and summer. And when we're in a cold, dark season of our spiritual lives, there will be, and there always is, a season of renewal. We will be renewed. There is hope. And I think that's what Paul is trying to say in this passage from 2 Corinthians. He's trying to build up to that hope to say that there is always renewal because God is recreating day by day. And even when we don't realize it, God is recreating us. And God is preparing us for whatever is new, the new thing that God is doing in our lives. And that is all because of the redeeming work of the cross, of Jesus' death and resurrection. It's like the ultimate seasonal change. It's the ultimate renewal. And God has indeed renewed us. And what Paul says, this is what God does is it gives us this restored relationship with God. And that restored relationship gives us the new perspective that we need. The perspective, a new perspective of life and the world around us. And what Paul is saying is, because we are renewed, because we are recreated, we have this new perspective. And with this new perspective, we just can see everything in a completely different light, in the light of Christ. In 1987, a scuba diver by the name of Bill Stone was able to stay underwater for 24 hours. Now, that is pretty unique considering the fact that a scuba tank typically has enough air to last anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, depending upon the depth of the dive and the experience of the diver. But Stone was able to stay underwater for 24 hours because he invented a new device that recycled the exhaled air, very similar to what they use in a space capsule. The device scrubs out the impurities so that that air can be reused again. And when a diver like Stone can stay underwater for such a long period of time, he gets a completely new perspective of the underwater world. 
because now he can really study what he's seeing. And I think that's one of the points that Paul was trying to make here. I think he's trying to tell us that we have, almost like we have a new set of lungs. We have new life. Because God has scrubbed the impurities out to give us that new perspective. It's like a makeover. And we see the world in a new light. <clears throat> now, God did this. And God set the wheels in mo motion. God took the first step. But now there are some steps that we need to take as well. And I think that's what the rest of the passage is talking about. With this new perspective, Paul says, we have some new responsibilities. We had, with this new perspective where we can see everyone in the light of Christ, we have some new responsibilities, and those responsibilities equate to being an ambassador, an ambassador for Christ. Now, ambassadors are part of the diplomatic core of their home nation, of the nation of their citizenship. But they are part of the diplomatic core in a foreign country, representing their home country. The United States has lots of ambassadors all over the world in countries large and small. And all those countries have ambassadors here in the United States as well. You see, an ambassador is the highest diplomat, the highest ranking diplomat in, in that foreign country. And they represent their home country. They promote their country. They speak for their government. They look out for the interests of their home country. And they help their citizens navigate their way through this foreign country. And so it's, I think it's clear how Paul is using this analogy here of us being like ambassadors. We are ambassadors. We are ambassadors of Christ because we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And we represent God here on earth. We promote kingdom living. We look out for each other's interests, and we look out for the interests of God. And we help each other navigate our way through life here on earth. Now, one thing to note is that ambassadors do not stay home. They live and work in the country to which they have been assigned, the foreign country. They interact with the people of that country. And they make their life there. And the only time they come home is to reconnect with other ambassadors or other government officials and to receive further training and preparation for the work that they are to do. Now, this should, should sound pretty familiar to us, because we gather here. We gather here in person, we gather online for that same purpose, to connect with each other and to connect with God and to be trained, to be prepared so that we can go out into the mission field, which is anything that's beyond these doors, these walls, and that we can then represent the kingdom of God out there. That's what it means to be an ambassador of Christ. We have been renewed, so we have this perspective, this new perspective, and we are now to go out into the world and share that with others and see everyone according to Christ. See everyone with love and compassion and care, no matter who they are, no matter where they are from, no matter what language they speak, no matter what they believe, we are to see them all in Christ and see them all with the love of Christ. So we come here to gather and prepare for that mission field. 
As citizens of the kingdom of God, it is our responsibility to showcase the kingdom, to help people navigate and to show the world our perspective. Ambassadors, though, sometimes encounter hostile territory in the foreign nation in which they're assigned. Sometimes they encounter resistance or people don't look with favor upon them. But that does not stop them from doing what they are called to do. That does not stop them from their assignment. Instead, they come back to their home country to be retrained, to be reconnected with others and be encouraged, and together to reevaluate, to re-strategize a different approach. Same thing happens with us. Yes, there are times when we go out into the world representing the kingdom of God and we encounter hostility. We encounter people who don't look favor, with favor upon us as citizens of the kingdom of God, as Christians. But we can't let that stop us. We come back. to our home base, we retrain, we reprepare, we reevaluate and re-strategize how best to interact with the world out there. And then we go back out into that mission field. You remember I told you last week my grandson's two favorite things to say recently. He likes to say, I'm strong. This is my three-year-old grandson, by the way. I'm strong. And I did it. I did it. You are strong because Christ is within you. You are strong and you can do it. You know, you, you may recall, too, that several weeks ago I talked about my own journey my own journey as a child of living in different countries and our family immigrating to the United States when I was 10 years old. Now, we already spoke English. I had already gone to an American school prior to that. But when we arrived here and when we established our home here, one of the first rules of the household that mom established was that we will continue to speak Dutch at home. Now, I have to admit, as a 10-year-old, I did not like that. I thought, we're in America, we need to speak English. But mom insisted. And you know who won that argument, right? Mom is always right. But later on in my life, I saw the wisdom. I saw mom's wisdom in that. And I appreciated it. Because there were several benefits from doing that. First, it, it made it much easier for me because I was already bilingual. It made it much easier for me to learn other languages. And that helped me in school. But I think most important about that is, was it, is that it never helped, it helped me to never forget my heritage. Because the whole idea of that was to preserve and to protect our heritage so that we would always remember where we were from. Don't ever forget your heritage as a child of God. Don't ever forget where you are from. No matter where you end up out there in the world, don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Former Secretary of State in the, during the Reagan administration, George Shultz, he, he had this exercise, this test, that he gave all his newly appointed ambassadors. They would come into his office, and he had this globe on a stand that spun around, and he would spin it, and he would tell the ambassador, go to the globe and point to the country, your country. And they would have to point to wherever they were assigned or so they thought. 
Well, Mike Mansfield, who had been appointed ambassador to Japan, came into his office and he underwent the same exercise. And when the globe was spun around and he went to it to point to it, he pointed to the United States and he said, that's my country. In 1993, in an interview with C-SPAN, Schultz related that story and he said thereafter, when he met with his newly appointed ambassadors, he told them, don't ever forget your country. Don't ever forget your home country. Don't ever forget where you are from. You are, you're from the United States. That is your country. Don't forget where you are from. Don't forget who you represent. You are a child of God representing Christ here on earth as an ambassador. Represent him well. Amen. Before we enter our prayer time this morning, I just want to call your attention to the candle that is on the altar, and that um, candle is in memory of Jason Condrat. Let us pray. Almighty God of grace, we praise you and thank you for coming alongside us, us as we journey. It is hard to be human. Help us find joy when we can. May we honor our grief when we need to. Help us be honest with one another when we are overwhelmed by what we wish we could be. God, help us and persist in overcoming racism to which we are called. May our lives honor the lives of others. May we pay attention to the needs of our neighbors as well as the needs within ourselves. Help those who are sick to feel your peace. May those who hunger find nourishment. May those who are held captive experience your presence. May we all be thirsty for your truth and your justice to prevail in this world. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who has given us eternal life in his resurrection. May we experience that everlasting life now. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As our response to God, there are a couple of ways we can respond. Um, <clears throat> some of the best ambassadors in history, some of the best ambassadors for Jesus Christ, were a group of disciples during Jesus' time here on earth and after his resurrection. Now, we know about the 12 apostles, but it wasn't them. There were several groups of women who were key ambassadors for Christ to the point that they were able to teach the 12 apostles a thing or two about being ambassadors for Christ, about representing Christ in the world. These were women who dedicated themselves to Jesus. They invited him into their homes. They supported, financially supported his ministries, and they stuck with him to the end and thereafter. These women were ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Jesus and Women is the title of the retreat that Connie is leading in August for women. 
I think we guys should be able to go because I think we could learn a thing or two about it. But anyway, so ladies, I encourage you to sign up for this, this, uh, this retreat and learn more about Jesus and women and his relationship and with, with women in ministry and the ways in which these women supported his ministry. That retreat is August the 6th through the 8th at Olmsted Manor. And uh, the registration deadline is July the 1st. So please contact the church office if you uh, want to sign up for that. Now, we also respond to God by sharing our resources for the good of the kingdom of God. And thank you all for your faithfulness in responding to God. And thank you for responding with your gifts so joyfully. Your offering of your resources makes a lasting impact in our community as well as within the church. And that generosity, through your generosity, it helps us to be better ambassadors of Christ. So you can present your offerings in a number of ways. You can do so through electronic means, either through our church app or through the church website. Or you can mail in your offering envelopes to the church office or you can deposit those envelopes in the offering plate that is located at the entry and exit to our uh, worship space. Let us uh, pray. Oh, gracious and ever-loving God, we thank you for all the ways in which um, you have blessed us and you have guided us and you have renewed us. And so as we come here this morning, we offer back to you a portion of the resources that you have entrusted us with. Thank you for that opportunity and thank you for helping us to become better ambassadors of Christ. And so we present these offerings to you to further the work of your kingdom. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. for worshiping with us uh, this morning, whether you're here in person or online, we're just grateful that we have been able to worship together. And again, a special thank you to Carter and Emma. Thank you for sharing your gift of music with us this morning, and you're welcome back anytime. We'd love to have you worship with us and lead us in music. 
Next, I hope you'll join us next Sunday for at either 8.15 or 9.30 in person, or uh, we live stream at 8.15 uh, and are available online thereafter on Facebook, YouTube, and our church app. So I hope you'll join us in one way or another. And again, if you are online, please let us know where you are uh, worshiping from and uh, uh, send us an email with your email address so that we may uh, connect with you. Next week, we will be uh, completing our series on seasons of change, and we'll be talking about our call to action. Next week, also, uh, we will be celebrating communion again. And now remember, we never leave a place of worship, but instead we are sent out into the world to be and do for others what Jesus Christ has been and done for us. Let us go and do so now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.